What's up guys, welcome to my intro to getting set up with Haskell and using VS Code. Haskell is a programming language. If you've never done any code coding before, um, we write different programs using different languages, just like how different people speak different languages. And in order to write these programs, you're going to need a program called a code editor. And just to, and this will be like your Microsoft Word, but for writing code. And you're going to need um, either the compiler or interpreter for that language. Now, if you're new to computer science, you're probably going to be wondering, what the hell are those? A compiler basically turns your source code into an actual program that can be run. And an interpreter just kind of directly runs your source code. You're going to need one of these two things to actually make a program. The Haskell community provides a tool called Stack that is used from the command line, like most compilers and interpreters. The Haskell Stack tool isn't actually a compiler or interpreter. Rather, it downloads compilers and interpreters as you need them, depending on your project configuration. It also serves as a package manager, which is a way of installing different libraries that add functionality to the core language. Okay, so getting started using Haskell on Windows, we're going to go to docs.haskellstack.org. I'm going to scroll down and click on the Windows 64-bit installer. Should download fairly quickly. Okay, make note of the install location. If something goes wrong, this is going to be important. And making sure that it adds to the path. Okay, yours might take a little bit longer to install. Mine installed fairly quickly because it's been installed before. To check that it's working, open up a PowerShell and type in stack space GHCI. This will launch the Haskell interpreter. If this is the first time you're doing this, it'll take a little while. Press colon quit to quit. If you're installing on Mac OS, you're going to go to docs.haskellstack.org, and you're going to copy this command down here. Then open up a terminal by pressing the Apple button in space and searching for terminal. And the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to run a command um, xcode select dash dash install. This is going to install the command line tools necessary to then install Haskell. So you need to make sure these are installed first. This might take a little while. So just be patient. Once this is done installing, you're going to paste in that command that we copied from the Haskell.stack.org page. And you're just going to let it run. This also might take a little while. Make note of where on your system this was installed. If something went wrong, most likely you're going to have to add um, this location to your path variable. You can check that it's working now by typing in stack space ghci. If this is the first time you're doing this, it'll download um, the interpreter. This will take a little while. Once that's done, you should arrive at a prompt like this, prelude. This is the Haskell interpreter. To quit, press colon Q-U-I-T, colon quit. And that will exit the interpreter, and you're good to go. Now we need a code editor, so let's install Visual Studio Code for Windows. Go to code.visualstudio.com and click the Download Windows button. This should automatically start downloading the user setup executable. Launch that when it's finished. Accept the agreement. Make note of the path install location next to this. You may or not may not want to click off these options. They're kind of just nice extra features. Click next, and we should start installing. This will take a little while. Okay, and when you're finished, you should be able to launch Visual Studio Code. And you're good to go. If you're on Mac OS, go to code.visualstudio.com 
and click the download from Mac button. It should automatically start downloading Visual Studio Code. Open it up. It's a zip file that will contain the Visual Studio Code executable. And like with all Mac applications, just copy this application into the Applications folder. And then open it. You might want to right click and open if it's not letting you open it. The first time you open it, it'll verify it. And you're good to go. An integrated development environment is a code editor that integrates with compilers and interpreters to give a bunch of extra functionality, like evaluating the code um, through the editor or doing code completion, a bunch of really, really nice stuff. A lot of people confuse integrated development environments with the compilers themselves. So I, so I hear like a lot of intro programmers say stuff like, oh, idle is Python. Like they don't know the difference between the Python interpreter and the idle code editor that then connects to Python to run Python code. VS Code can be used as an IDE through installing its sections. So VS Code actually has this really like nice community that builds um, extensions that give all sorts of nice extra functionality to um, different programming languages. To install the VS Code Haskell extension, we're going to open up VS Code. And we're going to go to the left tab and click on the extensions tab. And we're going to search for the Haskell extension. Now there's a few different ones to choose here from. I recommend installing the one that's called just Haskell like this. So you just hit install and it should install fairly quickly. Now we're ready to create our first Haskell project, which we're going to do through the stack tool, which I mentioned before is a command line tool. So start by opening up VS code. Now that we have VS Code, we could run a terminal through VS Code by going through the top and clicking New Terminal. This will open up a new terminal. Depending on your system, you might get a slightly different terminal. On Windows, you'll get a PowerShell. Now, because Stack is a command line tool, this is a good moment to take the time to learn the basics of using the command line. So if you type PWD, PWD stands for Parent Working Directory, and it will show the current path that you are in on your file system. So right now, I am on C users my username. You can also see it shows this to the, to the left of the prompt here. If I type ls, this for list directory, it will show the contents of this directory. Okay, so um, you can liken this if you look inside Finder or Explorer, where you go. Um, to the side and you see that you have your documents folder and your desktop folder and so on and so on. If you want to change into a folder, you can type in CD, whatever the folder name is here. So CD, let's say documents. If you'd like to move background, type CD dot dot and it'll move you back. So let's go back into documents. Okay, and typing in ls shows the contents of my documents. So to create a new um, stack project, we're going to generate a new folder to keep our stack project in with the stack tool. So we're going to type in stack new and then whatever we want to call our project. So we can just call this test Haskell. Okay, this might take a little while. Notice that it chooses a um, resolver. This is called an LTS. So this is basically, it's choosing a version of the compiler to use. You might have problems um, with mismatching versions if you're swapping code from one project to another. So be careful what versions you're using. So you'll, if you type LS now, you'll notice um, that this created a new folder test Haskell and we can move into this folder by typing CD test Haskell okay and type in LS and you'll notice that um, a variety of files were created um, automatically for you by stack 
that th you'll be able to edit these files. It'll be a starting point for your Haskell project. So at this point, it would serve best to just open up this folder inside VS Code. So you can see um, by typing PWD or looking at the prompt at the left here, um, where this folder is. So you do something like file, open folder, and I can look in documents, test Haskell, select folder. Okay, so now we've opened up our Haskell project and there's a few different folders going on here. So let's ignore most of these files for now. Um, there's a lot of complicated stuff going on here. The file that, the two files that you really um, need to pay attention to is there will be a file called main.hs inside of the app folder and there will be a file called lib.hs inside of the source src folder here. So um, main.hs is where the main program is run. Okay, so um, whatever is here is um, if, you, if you build a program um, using stack, whatever is here is what gets run. This main function, this is the function that will be run initially. And um, you'll notice that the main function just calls another function called sum func. So if we go to lib.hs, which you can see is imported, lib.hs is a Haskell file that contains some func. And all some func has right now is it says put strln some func. So um, what this is basically saying is print a string line some func. Okay. So if we to, are to open up our terminal right now, okay, and we're inside of the test Haskell directory. Oh, some stuff happened here and it switched to output. Don't worry about that for now. It might download some stuff that there are just some extra features. You don't really need to worry about this. Just switch back to terminal here. Okay. And at, uh, there's a few different ways you can do this. You type in stack build, okay, and this will build your um, program. And you'll see on Windows it creates an executable file. And if you want to actually run this program, type in stack run. And you'll notice running the program, all it does is it prints out some func right now. Okay, so we can change this up a little bit. We go to some func here and we can edit this to say something like hello world and save. So now if we go down. Okay, um, we could run stack build from the terminal again, or you'll notice that there are actually these um, buttons down here. So we could actually just click. Let's say stack build. Take a second and stack run. And you'll see now it prints hello world. Okay, so we've edited our first program. So this is one way to use Haskell um, by editing the code and then building a program that gets run. Okay, basically building an executable that gets run. Uh, another way to um, interact with Haskell is through the interpreter. So what we were using just now was the compiler. So um, the interpreter uh, for Haskell is called something called GHCI. The difference with the interpreter is it allows me to load a some source code, okay, and then manipulate that source code directly. So I can make another function here. Let's call it add x, y equals x plus y, okay? And this function just adds two numbers together. So I'll create this function and save it. And right now, if I were to run stack run again, okay, um, this wouldn't change my program at all, okay? Because nothing inside main here is using this new function that I added. Um, so if I wanna test out this function to see how it works, um, directly, what I can do is I can go back to my terminal, run stack ghci, and what I want to do is I want to specify the um, file 
that I want to load here. So the file I want to load is source slash lib.hs. Okay, so I've loaded um, lib.hs, and now I could run add one, two. And it gives me back three. Okay, so in this way, um, I could write functions and I can test them out um, on the fly, kind of, kind of manually. Um, the other way, so when, when I'm done with this, I'll press colon, quit. Um, the other way I could have done this is I could have just hit the load GHCI button. So make sure I'm on the file that I want to load and just hit load GHCI. Okay, and that loads lib. And we could also just call some func from here directly. And that says hello world. So now that you have the Haskell stack tool installed and VS Code installed and configured to use Haskell, you guys are ready to code. I highly recommend you do everything I showed you inside this video, including um, creating a new Haskell project with stack and building the project and changing it from printing out some funk to hello world. I believe in you guys. Have a good one.